the Labor Room Reality TV Show. A lot of you are also talking about uh, IT, you know, and that and that and that is the fastest world to grow in a, 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 a sector. You know, if you go back, look at what uh, Silicon Valley has done to America. But look at look at India. A few years ago, I remember going to India in 1985 as a tourist. Uh, I had just graduated from school and I lost my dad and um, after my father's burial, I, I thought I needed to go to India to go cool up because I had always fantasized about going to India. When I went to India in 1985, I found India to be a very, very backward society. As a matter of fact, traveling out of Motala Mohammed Airport then, which was one of the best airports in Africa and indeed, you know, comparably to any airport in the world, Motala Mohammed Airport was still nice. Um, when I got to the uh, airport in New Delhi, it was like I had landed in uh, which airport in Nigeria now would be comparable. Uh, I can't even think of which airport in Nigeria because it was filthy. It was just not what an ideal airport, you know, looked like. And um, of course, by the time I got into New Delhi, I found that everybody was driving a car called Ambassador. The, that was the taxis. That was what government officials drove. That was what everybody used. You know, there were no high rises. There were no. But I just noticed that, you know, there were medical facilities. You know, you see some, most of the high-rise buildings had, you know, some medical description. I, I, I didn't have any need for medical uh, attention, but I noticed that most of the beautiful structures I saw were all, you know, had something to do with medicine. And of course, I had time to travel around the, the country. Then in 2011, I had to travel to India for a medical reason. And when I got in there, it was a completely different country. The country had changed. The airport was sparkling clean. The Indira Gandhi airport was comparable to the Charles de Gaulle airport in Paris. You know, there it was speak and span, beautiful. Every facility that you can imagine in the world was there. Of course, getting out of uh, the airport, I now started seeing slick vehicles. You know, started seeing uh, Range Rovers and all of them. But even at that, you know, you now realize that it was an Indian company called Tata that owns Ford, that owns Range Rover, that owns BMW. You know, an Indian company, you wouldn't believe that. The same Indian company is a pioneer in uh, information technology. So when you look at India today, you find that 90% of the CEOs of all American companies in the, in the Silicon Valley are all Indians. Most of them school in Indian universities. You know, so these are some of the things we as leaders of this nation we need to look at, especially our governors. We need to begin to create, make sure that the kind of education that we give people, you know, of course, we every year we turn out thousands of graduates, you know, out of our universities. But the truth is that are they properly educated? Are they properly, you know, taught entrepreneurship? You know, how many, how many Steve Jobs can we get out of this country today? How many, of course, Bill Gates can we, you know, get? Or how many of these people who come out and begin to write software, who built Google? And I mean, these were all young, 28. I mean, um, Zuckerberg of uh, Facebook. I think it was 28 when he created uh, Facebook. You know, so. Or oh, it was younger, that, right? Good. So, you know, how many of these people are we creating in our universities? Are we look at our universities? Look at the, look at how motivated are the lecturers that we have in our. What if, what are even the facilities? When you look at a university, for example, you have you some people graduate from, and I find this very funny when people graduate from universities and they tell you like my cousins and all that who graduate and they say they want to go and. Uh, uh, I don't know what they call it, to get their grades together. I think they have to go with some paper around every, every um, clearance. They say it's clearance. And it takes almost a week to get that. They have to go to every department to collect their results. And I think in some cases, the lecturers have to go and bring the results back from home to be able to, uh, you know. And um, when I schooled and I left university in 1985, you know, if I go to, if I go on the internet now, I can just download my uh, my 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 my, my uh, uh, 
what you call it, a transcript. Are you asking yourself if a university that purports to uh, teach students about information technology cannot by itself, you know, uh, have such facilities installed among in, in its uh, operations? Then how can they possibly teach anybody how, you know, to uh, become, you know, the the uh, 2000 the, the next. Uh, new thing in information technology. So these are some of the things we need to look at as leaders. We need to ensure that we are just not paying lip service to education. We're not just paying lip service to everything that uh, we do. Because uh, what are the areas that are important? Education is very important. If we want to, you know, leapfrog into uh, the next generation, we must give people education. We must also train our youths in entrepreneurship because it's not enough to have to read and write you should be able to create you should be able to know how to market your ideas and how to ensure that you can turn these things into a, a wealth and create wealth so that because when you create wealth you employ people imagine how much apple has added you know in terms of wealth to the u.s economy and to all the countries where they have uh, operations the Labor Room Reality TV Show.